Hello, welcome to uh, our panel this evening. Um, we would, I would like to start with uh, introducing uh, the people on our panel. Um, we have uh, from Harper Collins, <laughs> um, as I learned, the director, international business development. Yeah, thank you yes. for coming, Nicole Lutke. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Um, we have uh, Sibyl Bauschinger, Open Publishing by Bilandia. She's um, responsible for sales and marketing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, we have Katrin Rustig from BookBeat, um, your managing director. Uh, you also have publishing background, and uh, as I saw, you also came, worked in Hansa some years ago, as, as, as many of, our, uh, of us in the publishing industry, I think we all started at Hansa someday. Um, Nathan Hull, um, Beat Technology, uh, founder of several startups, um, a lot of expertise in um, audio. And uh, thank you, Ralf Biesemeyer. You have a wonderful title. I um, saw um, you are managing director of publishing and spoken word. So spoke, yeah, the spoken word study. And thank you for um, having this panel set together and, and um, having us to discuss with you. The topic is um, audio, data, and books. And um, my name is Harold Hensler. I'm, I'm doing some research and teaching at universities and then also um, grew up in publishing and, um, and do the data summit over the MVB. So we have some uh, connections to the data. Um, We'd like to start to, in, if you could introduce yourself, talking to us, what are you doing with data? Because we all know we are, there are a lot, lot of data around. Usually the book industry, when I started, was not that data driven. And we have the discussion, are we data driven? Are we data oriented? So if you could just introduce yourself and say, what kind of data you're using, you're working with, and you're interested to work with? So as a publisher, our key objective is to um, create great audio experiences, great audio um, books, and um, to do so, we uh, need to find the right story, um, find the right narration, uh, to, to uh, define our publishing process, um, the right marketing strategy. And to do that, um, to create these uh, great audio moments, uh, we need uh, insights uh, about consumer behavior, where, when uh, are people uh, consuming uh, audiobooks, in which situation, and um, all this is um, important for us, um, and these insights are helpful to create exactly that, um, and that's what we are doing. And um, uh, we'd like to have data, we'd like to have more data, and uh, that's why we're here today, to find the data. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to continue? Uh Hey, um, yeah, Zevolution. Um, we're basically here to trying to help publishers sell more <laughs> of their of their audiobooks. So, when thinking about data, for us, it's you know mostly about marketing mix, basically. So, thinking about the right product in the right channel with the right promotional context. So, um, you know, it's it's a lot about benchmarking, looking at what works and what doesn't. Uh, bringing that together and then you know creating basically good promotional programs around it um, So, you know create visibility and awareness for for the books out there. So that's what we try to do Thank you Good afternoon <clears throat> um, at beat technology uh, we build two distinct uh, verticals direct consumer apps for publishers and app solutions for book retailers um, and in both cases, one of the key things we give back beyond supplying the technology platform and a lot of know-how uh, from, from publishing is data. So within the apps that we build, and I guess I'll get into this a little bit more later, we stitch a lot of keys that track events. And this could be how, how people open an app, what they play, what they listen to, etc. And that informs us with a lot of uh, usage data and habit data, which we supply back to the publishers or the retailers. I'm Catherine uh, from BookBeat. Um, we are a streaming platform for audiobooks and ebooks. Uh, I would say to your question, we are data driven. So most of our decisions are based on the learnings and the insights we get from the data. And in streaming, you get a lot of data, as we all know. 
Um, and I think uh, it is into two or even three directions maybe we are using data. One direction is to help, help our users to find the right content, um, to have a smart way to, to navigate them through this huge catalog we offer of one million works, titles. Um, that is one thing where we use data a lot. Um, and the second thing is to, as, as Nicole mentioned, to share insights towards the publishers, to um, show them the broad variety of KPIs that we can track, um, and hopefully they find um, helpful for their editorial decisions or for their marketing decisions. And then, of course, the third thing is also we are using the data also for our own marketing to help decide which books attract most customers. Can we find hidden champions that might be not selling the most, but engaging the most our consumers? Um, and that might something we, we might want to, to put in, the auto fo in our focus. And I could, on each of these three areas, I would love to go more in depth, but I think first. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Sibylla, I'm from Bilania. Um, we're an online marketing agency focused on the publishing industry. And I would say we are completely data driven <laughs> because we need the data, for example, if we do campaigns on social advertising like Meta, uh, Facebook, Instagram, we get a lot of insights from them. And um, what we need is like to get the right target groups in the, on the platforms and then have a look if they really do what we want them to do. <laughs> So we get a lot of data and to analyze if the campaign really worked out as we and as our customers like to do. So we have, yeah, we work with data like that's the base of all of our work. So, so thank you for the brief introduction. So we, we see we have marketing data, we have uh, usage data, we have uh, different options. And Katrin, you, you just said, well, I, w I would like to dive, deep, dive deeper in, into something, though. I would like to add the first question, that what kind of data you are collecting about the usage and how you think you can make it manageable for yeah, the next step to do this is yeah, analyzing, interpreting, and then yeah, <laughs> make those data work to do different things. Could you share some insights about that? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Um, maybe first of all, after this book fair, you might also want to have a look at the, um, uh, at the um, presentation uh, our CEO did um, today uh, that will be available uh, in film I guess um, because we shared a lot of data in this one hour speech um, today and uh, that might be interesting to dive deeper um, how we share this with the publisher I guess this is what you're asking um, is via a portal uh, as like a like a publisher portal they can access on a daily basis um, and we are trying to improve and enhance this publisher um, portal and data um, always. Um, what we try to do is educate about certain benchmarks that we see in streaming, like how is my title or my series or my author or my genre I'm producing titles in um, performing um, in comparison to the rest of the market. Um, do I perform better? Do I underperform? And then help to, to um, interpret that. Um, we have a lot of KPIs like um, do people listen through to the end? And why not? We have um, like reviews um, to the content, but also to the narration. Maybe the narration is rated better than the content. Might that be um, a reason why the title is not performing that good? Um, how is my lifetime compared to the average lifetime of this genre? Um, so there's a lot, a lot of um, very detailed drill down you can do, that you can do with streaming that you cannot see, of course, when you sell physical or when you sell downloads, because then sold is sold, but you cannot dive deep, really. Um, so this is what we, in, in this portal, try to uh, share and and also analyze in in, um, in a good way to to help educate um, decisions in the in the editorial process. I think that is um, towards the publisher. C can I yeah. continue to maybe a nice segue? Because I, I imagine even though we have different purposes, we probably gather all the same sets of data and 
analyze them in similar ways and share different things with publishers. From our perspective, I think is it, it's worthwhile clarifying that a, a lot of what we're talking about here is data gathered from digital services, but publishers shouldn't underestimate the value of how that data can be used to inform your traditional print businesses as well. And that can be around very you know, broad stroke things, but around your, your marketing strategy and how you're going to spend, because we may share geographical information about how books, audiobooks, and e-books are consumed. Um, it may be around your acquisition strategy. You mentioned the completion rates of books. I always know when I sit opposite a publisher, they hate it if you say, you know that people haven't finished their books. But there's a truth behind that that's really valuable. Like, I, of course, there's author care to consider, but are you really going to offer the same amount of money for the next book? Because you know, if there was a formula around enjoyment, that maybe the public didn't enjoy that last book as much. So there's a lot of digital information, particularly from streaming services, but also from other digital consumption that can really inform the traditional parts of our business as well. And too often I see there is still this line that's often digital here, print here, and that's really not the case. Just catching up, well, we have two ideas. There's the marketing and, and the product itself. Uh, what would you say, what kind of data would make you change the product in audio and in book? <laughs> That's a big question. So um, I think what is overwhelming sometimes is um, um, when I started in the book publishing industry, there's not a lot of data um, available that's changed. And it seems for audio, there's a lot of data uh, available. So con um, to, to see which books are finished or not, um, those are really, <coughs> really important and um, good questions to change the process. How to produce a book, what kind of content needs to be produced for which situation. I think this is, um, this is very important for us, but sometimes it's overwhelming. Um, we need to prioritize uh, that data. We need to learn um, what really drives our process and um, to, to aggregate this data. And I think not every publisher is able to do that uh, on its own. So um, we also need to rely that we can, have, uh, can get help in structuring that um, and um, to help us um, driving the right uh, decisions. And I think maybe it's over to you um, uh, that uh, these are important values uh, we need to consume. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm the only one ha don't having a mic, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of data available in, in you know in the different channels and from different sources, but, but you know you got to turn them into information. Data, you know, itself doesn't doesn't give you anything really um, in terms of completion rates. In terms of you know think of, think of, think from the consumer. Um, onwards um, like there's I think there's different channels different consumer types using you, using their books audiobooks uh, their products differently like look at music driven uh, music focused uh, platforms track based platforms <clears throat> it's probably be more, more about discovery um, and and learning from the consumer types in those kinds of channels how they use your books compared to a book-centric platform where the consumer type is probably a little different. Um, so, you know, just look at com completion rates doesn't give you much. You need to put it in pers into perspective too, in terms of where you market your product, um, how is it used. Um, and I think that's, you got to bring that together from the different, different channels. Um, and that's what we try to do, um, to then learn from, you know, how is the book used, um, how is it, you know, positioned, um, to, to then get back to program planning, basically, and promotional planning, too. To, as you say, not only for audiobooks, but for, for your program as a, as a whole, too, right? Because it's a, it's a title-based decision-making process at the end of the day. Sibylle, would you like to, to add some comments on, on which kind of data would help you um, to make a better marketing for audiobooks and the books? <laughs> well, the better marketing uh, to make the books, I think our most challenging part is to combine the data we get from the platforms like Facebook and combine it with the data you all have because we can just know if a campaign was really successful 
because we can just see until the point where they do a click and then go, for example, to a retailer or to, uh, to a download or to a streaming platform. We can only track until a certain point by the, via marketing. And with the complete tracking and conversion APIs, we can also track a bit more, but we, in the end, don't get like all the data, for example, from retailers. So we just know that they clicked to a shop, but then we cannot combine the real effective data from the retailer. With, uh, with the data we get from the platform. So that for us is really challenging to know in the end if it was really, really, really successful. And we know, okay, we got the right target group, they clicked and it was successful for us until a certain point. But in the end, we need to combine and get, find a way to really combine these two yeah, sources of, of data to get a really effective result, I think. Did you make the experience that audio books work differently than books in terms of the products? That you see that, well, the retention rate or, well, keeping with audio books might be a completely different thing than keeping with e-books, yeah? You go first. <laughs> There's a few things in that. It's a simple question, but it could go in so many different directions, right? I think... Um, there's a, co there's a commonality. Uh, uh, audio, we see there's a lot more binge-worthiness, potentially, um, particularly as people start to experiment a little bit more. And it's not as prevalent as I would have expected it to be, but if you look in super mature audio markets like the Nordics, there's a lot more experimentation in audio around short-form audio, audio first, audio only editions. And I don't mean from platforms, because platforms do a lot of that themselves. Um, but I mean where the publishers are experimenting in these forms too, which is data driven, because it's informed by how much they know people listen per day. So then they're like, oh, so we don't just have to do a mirror reproduction e uh, audiobook of the, of the print or the ebook, but we can, we can go short form, because on Beats platforms, we know that the consumption per day is 41 minutes. That's aggregated across uh, uh, you know, 13 or so platforms. So publishers, some publishers are starting to create content to replicate the listening habit. And then you couple that with serialization, and suddenly you have something that's super, super sticky as a service. And if you're the publisher behind that, even better. That's slightly harder to do in ebooks, but it's not to say it doesn't exist. So that was kind of one tangent of where that question maybe could have gone. Yeah. Um, using data to inform the, the product creation itself, and then what that habit can become. Yeah, and talking about consumer types again, you know, um, looking at track-based services, I think that alone gives you a lot of information about, you know, how how people use and listen to a book, which you don't get anywhere else, right? Because you buy a book and you read it, or you don't read it, right? Or you buy a, a, a bundle audio book and you listen to it till the end or not. You never know. But if you know and and you know, we're so as consumers, we're so used to shorter form content, as you say. Look at YouTube, look at other media types. There's only 24 hours in a day, but there's so many impulses um, that it doesn't surprise me at all to see that you know you're probably reluctant to completely listen to a five-hour audiobook um, when it comes to certain consumer types. Not the book lovers, basically, but the ones we want to address as well. Um, so, you know, um, experiment with that. I would, I would say that we see that as well in the marketplace, that, um, you know, different, different content forms, formats, um, play length, that kind of stuff play, play a big role. And maybe to add on that, um, maybe there is some differences between the platforms so I think you spoke about the, the music mixed media platforms. For us at BookBeat, I would also stress that our best-selling titles uh, that you see in the charts list that we monthly release to the industry, um, there is a lot of long-form content. There is a lot of series, uh, but each book is 10, 15 hours long, 20 hours long. So. Here, it is more towards what you mentioned as well, the, the binging character of, of the audiobook consumption that is very strong at these dedicated book services like BookBeat is. So uh, in the top 
10, top 20 titles, you see these long, um, long stories that people want to dive in. And that is maybe a different to, um, to other platforms like um, Spotify or so, just to add on what you said. But, but that's exactly what I was saying, right? You have different consumer types and different kind of channels. So the product probably needs to differ to make the most out of it, right? Because you, you, yeah, you market different products to different <laughs> consumer types with different, different experiences to what they want to have. And that's exactly where we need to go to, um, to have a broader variety of content. Um, I think um, that's what we are aiming for, and um, therefore we need this uh, data to understand for which target group, which channel, uh, which length, and what kind of narrator, how young, how old, where, um, where is the, the content consumed. This all um, needs to be uh, <coughs> analyzed by us, um, and our goal is not to to, uh, with the data to decide we do, do not um, produce certain content, but the decision is to have a broader variety of content, to meet um, more younger people as we learn there are uh, on the streaming platforms more and more because they are used to use their handy for everything. And um, that's exactly why data is so important for us uh, to, to make these better decisions to, to, to balance our um, audio strategy with um, creating all these different uh, content types um, in a different way. Um, and um, so, yeah, I'm uh, happy to consume this data. <laughs> Uh, we, we see one change is you get data from the different platforms and see what is performing and what not, and now you can manage your program better because we were used to do books or audio books because we know how to do it for centuries. <laughs> and, and now it's more customer driven uh, to, to see what happens in the place, in the different places, in different experiments. So, to conclude, what kind of experiments and, and tests would you suggest for people to do in order to find out which things perform better? For the publisher? For publisher, for, uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we, we need to experiment uh, with um, what you said. We have uh, we are used to listen to long um, long audiobooks, uh, but we need to chapter wise produce audiobooks um, to use platforms where we see a target group that are used to hear podcasts. So for 15, 20 minutes, and we need um, to create a plot that uh, exactly works for these platforms. So there's a lot of room for experience, um, and um, that's, I think, uh, where we are going to and uh, what we will do. Any other suggestions? What to I, I would say from, from events like this, right, so there's, there's access to data in different forms, right? So lots of retailers give no data beyond sales and numbers. Other platforms give some data, other platforms give more. Then there's great services, distribution houses that you know, uh, furnish their, their um, publishing partners with lots of information. But at events like this, there's a lot of white papers published and all these kind of things. So even if first-hand as publishers, you're not getting the data that you might require. There is an, almost too much sometimes, because you still have to interpret it and make it workable for you, but there's a plethora of information out there around date, like data-driven activities that are happening. And there's examples from you know, all over the world. Europe in particular is a hotbed of experimentation of different kinds of things. So just look around and see what works. Look at BookBeat. You know, see what they're doing that looks a bit different as a publisher. There might be some elements in there that you can make happen within your list and with your publishers and within the realms of what agents you work with are, are happy to do. So there's just a lot out there. But to your point, right, just do something. You know, there's, there's, don't be static. Because if you're static as publishers, people from outside the publishing world will come in and do it first. And then you're not in as much control. We are out of, running out of time. So thank you very much for these insights. What I see is let us surprise by the data and experiment a lot with the different platforms and with the different products in order to, to go on. Um, we can continue our discussion now in, uh, what was the room, Ralph? Uh, um, yeah, 4C, Concorde. Exactly. There's a networking reception that we sponsor. There's drinks. Um, it was planned to be here, but it's in 4C, room Concorde now. So um, if you want to share drinks with us, then 
we'll meet you upstairs. Thank you for Silverlution for organizing all of that, and Ralph, and thank you for this great panel for sharing your insights. Thank you for joining.